Pirok. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour. Hello. Good to see you all. Hi, guys. So Hope good to see you all. Yeah. Saturday. So we'll get a minute for people to come in and hang out before we officially get started. It's good to see all your lovely faces. Good to see uh, folks joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. You Dave Skolnick. Hey, man. Ooh, Dave Skolnick's got, yeah. a, he's got a twin brother that's joining us as well. Wow, Ron Angle. Hey, man. Ron. Two different views. So quick. Um, Linda K. Sire Schuster with with uh, a headband, dude. <laughs> Donna Bird is here. Yeah, Donna Bird. Skolnick, uh, you grizzly old dude. How are you? I see Anna, Annika Byerly. I think, I think she's out here in Lieberman. Chicago. Johan Krebs. Wow. Quite a room full. Yeah. Hey, Nancy. Hey. Cool. So uh, I think a few people are still jumping in, but I think we could get started and get get things run, running here. Um, okay. Let me make sure you're there. Okay, cool. I'll give an intro for those uh, who are joining for the first time. This is Piano Tech Radio Hour. And it's being brought to you by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, an online educational resource that offers you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. You can find out more at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. And we're also having the second ever online convention for piano technicians coming up here in March. Put a link there in the chat if you haven't signed up for that make sure you take advantage of our second round of early bird prices you missed out on the first round of early bird prices you you, you definitely missed out on saving as much as possible but you can still save quite a bit uh, if you can jump in now before those price prices end and um yeah today we've we've had a pretty solid roster of guests for the past several weeks some of them our instructors from that upcoming convention. And we've got a few more scheduled, but we thought we'd take a little break here and just check in, just just me and David, plan for today. Every, yeah, every yeah. once in a while, we, we just like to stir it up with, with Ethan and I. I feel so comfortable with Mr. Janney that I, I, I love to just spend an hour talking about piano nerd stuff and have everybody else do it. Yeah. So uh, I see it. So it's 76 in South Carolina, Jim Kelly says. His winter hat finally arrived. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think it's that warm here in Chicago. We've got, we had tons of snow here. I don't think um, it's that warm here in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't. So, so uh, yeah, we thought we might talk about the upcoming convention a little bit, go over the schedule, you know, see see what's cooking um i've as always you know we we're able to post a certain amount of information but it's always hard to keep up with everything that's going on behind the scenes so if people have questions um i may have extra information if you're curious or confused or something like that i can share or if you just have a question that needs answering i can investigate and maybe send along an email or incorporate that um and then what else um actually had a recent question come in from uh, i think it was last week's feedback form which we could also dive into a uh, person who's kind of just curious what is a master piano technician is there such a thing you know and and if so how how do you get to be one um, and that's actually a very interesting question that i'm happy that we could discuss and discuss among all of ourselves um, it's a it's a great question yeah as well as any questions or, or topics of interest that come up in the chat today, this could go anywhere. But uh, I think I, yeah, I, I had also thought that we could kind of take a stock of where we all are 
in terms of the pandemic and yeah yes whether we feel hopeful now and what we <laughs> what we think about now and what we think about six months from now and <clears throat> how we're doing because i need some people are doing fine and some people are really scratching the blackboard with their fingernails they're just there's they're they're seeing this as a horrible time and so let's let's talk about it see why yeah, it's horrible sure. why it's whatever it is yeah i could say actually we I could say just for personal experience, we have a, our piano tuning business out there in New York City. A couple of piano technicians go out in the field to do tunings. Um, I'll give a quick summary of how that's going. You know, I mean, first of all, we kind of got off the scene before it was mandatory. Um, you know, put up a video on the site saying, okay, you know, we're, we're shutting down our operations in the interest of safety. Um, but then uh, at a certain point, things started to clear up and people started to be interested in doing tuning. So we did get back out there in the field and do some some work. And I'm not sure how much, it's really hard to tell how much of our business is due to the pandemic or due to the pandemic you know, slowing down or things getting better or not. If it's really hard to tell how, how the influences are usually as, as with many of us, business picks up around the holidays, right? November, December. And we've even seen a pickup, sometimes even more so in January, February. Um, and I don't know. What I noticed is we didn't get as much as we thought uh, in terms of calls for business between November, December. Uh, but we are picking up. We had a good week, a couple of weeks this last few weeks. And... Um, the technicians are getting tested, you know, just to be really safe and using all the precautions, um, masks and, you know, being very cautious, you know, going into people's homes. But everybody stayed safe, knock on wood, and, and everything's been, been going okay. But I can't say that it's been easy. And I can't say that there's been a lot of confidence around what, you know, whatever the next day is going to hold. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's how things have been for us okay for, for me for, well for me it's really a, a unique experience in my lifetime after having worked five or six days a week for a big fat part of my adult life on pianos i have not gone into somebody's house and tuned their piano since last march 9th uh because before i was diagnosed with cancer in april i have had rheumatoid arthritis for 20 years and if i got and and kind of weak pulmonary system from a bad pneumonia i had 40 years ago so my doctors said look if you go out and get covid there's a really good chance you'll die. So I have basically been operating the business and running the restorations and scheduling the, the tunings, which is my partner and one time protege now colleague and collaborator, Nick Morello, schedule him, schedule some other, schedule all the moves and rentals and all that stuff. But I haven't been out in a long time. So, the pandemic has made a radical change. Can pen pandemic and the fact that I <laughs> and that I got and You've had quite a year cancer David. in the past year. <laughs> quite a year. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, not 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 the average year, um, but the restoration business is pounding. It's up. Um, showing pianos and selling pianos about the same as before but no no downturn after the first two three months when everything was asleep um all the restorers that i talked to and the rebuilding shops all across the country that are that are up and going are up and going and a lot of piano technicians that i talked to are up and going 
whether it's a little bit of a limited thing, but I know Nick gets tested all the time and demands COVID free environments. If he goes into tune or work on a piano, anywhere it is, a store or a church or a house or wherever. And um, he's busy. He's, he's busy. We're busy. And I'm not beating the bushes for appointments and we're, 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 we're busy. I'm not, usually I send text messages out. I haven't for, since this comeback from the pandemic. Um, I'd love to hear from some other people. Yeah. If they can raise their hands, then you can unmute them. And Yeah. And I'll just, I'll say this. A few people were in the waiting room till just a minute ago. So I'll just reiterate uh, what we're oh. doing today. It's just me and David and we're, you know, covering whatever topics are, are relevant for the day. But among them, we were, we were just talking about how is business going for everybody and how is life going uh, with respect to the pandemic and the recovery from the pandemic. We just shared a little bit about our experience. We're opening it up for other techs to share about theirs. Also, later on today, we can talk about the upcoming convention, give an overview, answer any questions that are um, out there and, you know, confusions, things like that. Also, just behind the scenes, I'll have, I have more information on what's coming than we're able to <laughs> post and share in emails and websites and things. So if you're kind of curious about what's to come, maybe I have an answer. And uh, also, if we get to it, a question from a participant that came in on a feedback form, which might be interesting to discuss, what makes a master piano technician? Is there such a thing? And if so, how does one achieve that? So yeah, is anybody, I haven't, Actually, nobody's chimed in from the chat. Anybody have anything they want to share about their experience for related to the pandemic, <laughs> life in general in the past year and a half? Carl would like to share. He's raised his hand. Let's uh, get him on board here. Carl, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell us what you got to say. I'm unmuting. So first of all, uh, I've gotten both of my shots, which is good. I'm... Um, you know, I'm cautious, I follow all of the obvious things, but I'm not particularly worried about this. I, I don't go in dangerous situations. I work in people's houses, I wear a mask, people keep their distance. It's, it, I don't view it as dangerous in any way. Um, I do a couple, two or three private calls a week. I'm in the recording studio uh, two times a week. And that's basically all I do. You know, I, I uh, existing clients contact me and, and I respond. <laughs> when, new, when new people call me, I don't even return their calls. I'm kind of, you know, I'm working so much less than I'm used to working. But, you know, I'm working enough to keep my hand in it and be happy. And uh, I have no desire to, to run around like I used to. Do you get enough work to keep you out of trouble? Sounds like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, the recording, do, doing two or three recording sessions a week keeps me happy. And doing, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, three privates a, a week lets me do things. I occasionally file some hammers and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working so much less than I've worked my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, who, who knows what the future holds? Me too. <laughs> You and me both, brother. Yeah, and I do remember just chatting with you when things were fresh, you know, and, and, and you're kind of, who knows, maybe this is it, right? For your business, maybe it's all done and this is just the inflection point. So it's interesting to see, you know, it's gotten to a point where you're, still, you're, you're actually still are working and still keeping up with things, but it's more yeah, that it's slowed know, down. I, I would say my, my business was different than most other people's business because two thirds of pianos that I worked on every week were stage or recording pianos. They were institutional pianos of some sort. And the places that I work being the cruise ships, the concert hall, the big hotels, they're completely closed. There's zero work in those venues and there may never be work in those venues. The concert hall will open again in the fall. But uh, you know, I, I'm never gonna, it, the, the nature of our business has changed, I, I think. Yeah, agree. As we've been saying for 
lo these many years. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Yeah. Uh, if there's anything specific, I got a little ping from the chat here. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, no, there's a couple comments now. Um, let's see. Oh, interesting. David Skolnick just rose this up, rose this point. I'll read the question, see if I have an answer. Can you supply curated sound video files from David Clavins? It would have helped to have more of that beforehand. Okay. Mm. Um, well, I can say this, um, and maybe it's useful. Maybe you want something more specific. He does have a YouTube channel. And so there are a lot of custom videos uh, regarding the various models of pianos that uh, he has. So I'll get a link to that and I can definitely share that. And yeah, Pooja, and some, yeah. Of, some of those, some of those recordings have broadcast quality audio if you plug in a set oh, of cans sure. or listen through good speakers they're sure. they're, they're, they're they're good 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 fidelity He's, that that guy doesn't mess around i mean he i saw him i saw this weirdly it shows you how arrogant i am i saw it as kind of a joke as kind of like a sideshow act but then i i i heard it and i listened to some of it before he uh, was on uh, through headphones on YouTube, and it was like, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. This guy actually has made something that's uh, significantly different than a regular piano. It was fascinating. Yeah, I'm going to pull up that YouTube channel right now, and I'll link to it. But just to follow up on your comment, David, um... I'm very, I'm hyper aware of this aspect of what I would call just an aspect of humanity, an aspect of reality. And that is that there's this pattern, you know, there's these things that emerge and when you see them, they're kind of funny and you don't know what to do about them. And, you know, sometimes you laugh, you know, sometimes you make fun of it. Sometimes you scared of it, you know, like, and, you know, and sometimes those things don't go anywhere. And it was made sense to laugh at them or be scared at them or whatever. Um, but I've definitely seen multiple sides of that equation. One, I've been on that, you know, I've been on the side of the equation. I've been the thing that's new that people aren't quite sure about and they didn't know whether to laugh or run or whatever. Um, and it's, it's just the test of time. And I think that David Clavins, um, I would, I would agree. I would echo that too. I think at first when I kind of saw, I was like, Oh, it's just some gimmicky thing, you know? <laughs> um, but really meeting him and talking to him, very interesting gives me a whole new perspective on what he's doing absolutely he's really serious about what he's doing and those pianos do sound beautiful they um, do and, and and he's making a living uh uh doing custom you know installations in churches and venues and weird modern forward-looking buildings all over usually europe but mm -hmm. you know it's amazing yeah and i think there is something to be said you know, for finding your niche in any industry. And, you know, as it was for him, the more custom it is, the more fragile it can be, especially in the beginning. But as you build that expertise and you build mm -hmm. that especially, and now you're the only one that does that, um, it can actually be a stronger foundation than if you're just another one of those, you know, another yeah, one of those, oh, yeah, I'm just your average, just like any other. Um, yeah. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing to consider as people are building a career to kind of find what's my niche. And it also makes that competition thing. I feel a whole lot easier. You don't have to feel threatened by other people. They're just doing different things um, and you've got a special skill. So that's cool. Um, that, that's what the whole, the whole craft can be if you look at it. Right. Yes. <clears throat> So I got David Clavin's YouTube channel. I'll put that link in the chat so people right. can check that there's out. There's others. There's been other comments and stuff. So check them out. Yeah, let me grab it. Um, also, just quickly want to give a note to Pooja, who's helping out with the project. Remind me, Pooja, we'll we'll put that link in an email coming up too, so people can check out David Clavin's stuff. And I'll quickly follow up before we go on to a comment. I talked to David Clavin's yesterday, and he's. Um, 
sort of refining what his topic for his class is going to be. And he's going to talk a lot about this Unicorda piano that he's designed, which is a newer design that he did in yeah. collaboration with, uh, with a pianist. And um, so he's going to do a deep dive in that particular instrument. So that should be interesting. Okay, moving on. Do you remember um, what that sounded like, um, uh, Ethan? Scott, I'm sorry, just, just, a, just a short thing. Do you remember what that Unicorda sounded like? It sounds like a, it sounds like a, a, a beautiful, rich clavichord. It's like almost like a personal instrument. Yes, I it's think also fantastic. when you get into that type of instrument, um, because you have the cleanness of the tone and probably the stretch is even a little bit different. You get more. It's not really a bell, but there's a bell-like quality to. The tone of the instrument yeah it's definitely a different tone it's definitely like a dulcimer a, yeah yeah kind of uh uh it's super attractive man i i went back and then listened to these i found a youtube channel with really good audio with the unicorda or unicorda or however he pronounces it <clears throat> and man it's it's an awesome sounding instrument you know different all right. So also, um, I know Diego's on this call and he's been emailing me. Thank you for your patience, Diego. Um, and I think the emails are about if you're a subscriber to the various levels of piano technicians, master classes, library, you know, how does that combine with doing the convention? And the, the, the truth is it's everybody is on a sort of different, um, has been around for a different amount of time. So we've kind of been customizing packages for people depending on how their involvement with the project. So if you do have a, have had, uh, you know, a craftsman artisan uh, apprentice subscription and you're sort of curious how that plays out with the convention, you get in touch with me and I'll try to get back with you and we'll figure out what the best uh, way to get you involved with the convention is. And then also something you know, everything's been up in the air. We're kind of having to redesign everything that we're doing. The conventions have been really, uh, I, I, they, they're a great direction for us to go. So we're happy to do that, but it's kind of hard to incorporate it exactly with the existing model. So one thing that we will be doing for apprentice, uh, craftsman, artisan level uh, subscribers is what we'll do is we'll take the convention content and we're going to release it slowly over time to those subscribers definitely that will be part of what your your uh, features are so uh and we're going to put together a calendar so you can see how that will be released and uh basically you know you won't have access to it immediately but over a, a period of time every every month or two we'll release a new lecture from the existing um uh, conventions and that'll become a part of your library that you can access. So that's that's what we're developing right now as kind of a fair way to combine things. And if you need more information, just reach out. And if I don't get back to you right away, you know, I will I will get back to you. Okay, let's see here. David Skolnick got a second shot last Wednesday. Bunch of, bunch holding... of stuff in the chat room. Yeah. David Skolnick again said got a second shot last Wednesday, holding back until his wife was able to get hers. Another month after that, question marks. Um, Brenda Ming asked where I am, and I think she might have asked that uh, in follow up to me talking about how the business is going. So the business I was, I, I'm actually in Chicago area right now, but I used to live in New York and I run a group of piano technicians in New York. So I was talking about our business in New York City. That's, that's what I was talking about. And I'm in a Chicago suburb. Um, Brenda Ming said, She's in Sando, San Jose, 50 miles south of San Francisco, one of the worst counties in California for COVID. She's been out of home service with a few exceptions since last March. She's been tested once last September and got her first shot a few weeks ago. Second shot is due next week and she'll resume home service probably around March 15th. Okay, well, that's awesome. great news. Patience is paying off and people are finally getting to that point where they can feel more confident about getting back to work. I, I got my second shot uh, <clears throat> a week ago yesterday, and it, it really is a completely different feeling. Like, I feel like, oh, I can go into somebody's house now. I can go drive through at a drive-in <laughs> if I wanted to. I could, I could, well, I could <clears throat> you know, crutch into a store and 
go shopping even if I wanted to. That's it's um we forget to be grateful for what we should be grateful for. This is the first time in the history of the world that a vaccination that a vaccination, a vaccine rather, has been made up, created, and implemented in a year. It's literally miraculous in the history of medicine. So, and the fact that finally we're getting some direction and we have really, we, we went from no, like a complete abject failure as, as a, a, to get vaccine into the arms of our citizens. Now we're, we're rocking, <laughs> we're rocking heavy. And uh, so I know it's tough. It's a tough, it was a tough year for me. But there's, there's hope at the end of everything and gratitude while everything is going on. Yeah, one so, thing, one thing I, I feel compelled to add is one thing that I've learned from the pandemic and this whole experience is that you just don't know and you never will, you know, when something difficult or excellent is around the corner. And it is sort of independent yeah. of these larger movements, you know, cases in point that have been very salient for me and can, other people may have had completely different experiences, but, you know, um, my father died, but he did not die from COVID during this, during the whole pandemic period, so, you know, and, that, and I have an elderly parent, you know, she's doing fine. Um, my dad got cancer, right? Uh, David got cancer. He recovered from cancer. Uh, you know, it's it's all so complicated. And I think the the one point to remember is that is that the preciousness of everything, and to to just live not in fear that anything could happen at any moment, but in inspiration that anything could happen at any moment. And uh, you know, putting you know that love in front of fear, however you can and uh, taking that to every moment, no matter what's going on in the world. So not easy to implement, but a useful thing that I'm taking away from all this. You know, there's, there's, there's an old phrase that may seem rough or crude or, but it's absolutely true. And I've personally experienced it the past 10, 12 months. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There's something to be learned from tough situations if you're in a frame of state of being to learn it. There's amazing things to learn. As and and it's <clears throat> can be insanely painful. So yeah, welcome those challenges that arrive and even seek those challenges. That's another thing that's again. This is just my personal perspective. Other people might have something different, but uh, the challenges can really, like you're saying, can be the catalyst for something greater in many ways. And by avoiding it, you avoid the growth that comes alongside of it. It's 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 a great thing that we all have, which is we love the comfort zone. All right, there's a lot of comments now. Read the comments, Mr. All right, here we go. Let's talk about John Ross. John Ross said, I have had some in-home tuning situations uh, where the wife agrees to the protocol, yet when arriving, I find the husband does not and remains in the room. So I have to had to be very specific about everyone in the home is on board with the protocol. Yeah, that is uh, that's tough. tough. Yeah, um, I've definitely walked into, I was actually to host one of these events one day I was traveling and I booked a, um, you know, like a shared office space and I just thought, well, it's a shared office space. It's a, they're going to have the protocols, you know, and everything's going to be fine. And I walked in and the guy didn't have a mask, you know, and, and I said, oh, you know, you, you don't have a mask. He's like, I could do that if you want. And I'm like, ah, this doesn't really feel like you're fully taking this whole thing seriously, you know, and I had to just go find another place. And it's uh, wow. just sort of part of, part of the whole, whole situation. Yeah. My partner, Nick, has gone into two situations where she's new clients from the website. And we we always tell them beforehand, 
we're COVID safe. Nick's been tested. Everything is cool on our end. Make sure that you stay 10 or 12 feet away from Nick and make sure nobody else is around and, you know, just do it as safely as possible. Well, we, you don't have to write a check. We'll, you can pay through the invoice or whatever. Um, and he's had to walk out of a couple of places where people were not only didn't do it, but were snippy and snarky about it. Hmm. Yeah, there's a bit of that coming on. Um, yeah, John Ross also followed up saying he has two daughters in the medical field and the COVID situation is to be taken seriously from, you know, his inside information on that. Um, there's definitely a, a divert, I'm, you know, our country has been divided. A lot of people are divided on their attitudes around this type of thing. I think one of the couple themes are, you know, just to remember, it's not just about us individuals, you know, about our own safety, but how our behavior affects other people's safety. Um, and, you know, just to put the positives in from every side of it, you know, being boosting our immune systems and being healthy and eating healthy and exercising and, and keeping our systems fresh and alive are a good way, um, are a good thing in all situations. Um, David Skolnick, uh, just referring to David Clavin's pianos, uh, not all of these types of projects are illuminating as they might be in inter inter that what traditional instrument, but he agrees that uh, what, we're, what we're saying about David Clavins. Um, let's see, here are we. Rint Azenga, I hope I pronounced that right. There are, are two other European piano makers who, dot, dot, dot. I don't know what the rest of that is. Let's see. Um, I'll find it in a minute, make, but we'll go back. Who make pianos? <laughs> yeah, there are two you other European piano makers who are also, this is a private message to me, very interesting. Chris Mean in Belgium and Stefan Paulello in France. I've heard of Paulello yeah, strings. Of course, I've heard of Paulello strings. I didn't know he they built pianos. Both a straight strung and a grand piano. Maybe interesting guests. Uh, yes, that sounds good. I'll make uh, a note of that. If you know either of those folks, feel free to connect me by email. By the way, folks, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in front of everyone, so that's useful information. If you think we should have a guest, um, just reach out to me and recommend them. And if you know that person, you know, definitely send a joint email and explain why you think this would be a good connection and we'll try to get it set up. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned this publicly uh, before, but I will say it now because I think it's useful to share and just to address it, I have, I did find out that there are, there are some folks who may wish that may have wished that we had a more a feminine representation in terms of our guests on piano tech. That would be me. Hour, piano technicians masterclass. David has stated it, you know, but also we've had um, uh, participants, you know, who are who are, are interested in that. And I'll just, I'll share this now just to make it clear that I have reached out to several uh, females to participate in these things and, you know, whatever it turns out, they've been busy. Um, it's not been the thing for them uh, or not. So I would, I would just, what I would say around that is, I think that some of them will come around. And if you know any of them and want to encourage them, you know, to come along, you know, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I think this will be really great. You know, if you don't mind uh, me pushing a little extra, I think you'll really enjoy it. I think it'll be great for everybody. <clears throat> and that goes to say for anybody, you know, whether it's a woman that might want to participate or um, um, just another artist or technician that you think would be a good guest. Uh, feel free to put in an extra good word for things. Uh, let's see here. Now we'll go back I to... Have, I have, Yeah. just as an aside, I've, I've brought up half a dozen other names that Ethan didn't just name that we've contacted and haven't had any interest in teaching that are names that most of you know, I would imagine. So I just, I'm deeply aware of the imbalance. Yeah. Deeply. And, and, and just to say again, well, right now I'm setting aside any of the, gender specific things that I just mentioned, just regarding folks who, 
you know, aren't, aren't participating or are wanting to do it. Um, I think it's really, I think you, I think most of you really understand this deeply, but a lot of respect goes to the folks that are joining and, um, and putting themselves out on, out on a limb to try something new. I yeah. think, uh, it's, it's not easy. I know it's not easy for me to try to go out here and try to interest something new, but I know for them, they're on the spot. They, they're the expert, you know, and they got to feel like they got to live up to it. And they feel like they got to bring good information and, you know, deal with the possibility. There's some glitches and that might affect their reputation and all of these things. So, um, I give a lot of respect and appreciation to the folks who have, you know, come along and, uh, been willing to participate. So, put that out there it's been it's been astonishing and and, and <clears throat> empowering for both of us wouldn't you say Ethan that so many amazing human beings have have uh, have been our guests yes yes and I've recognized I, I uh, one of you um, I won't say who one of you actually went on a campaign to try to recruit several people who you thought would be good guests and you realize how hard it is <laughs> you know you started reaching out to people and, oh they said no they said no they said no they said no um but you know in that conversation that i had with a with a participant it's an adoption curve just like anything else <clears throat> so there you got the early adopters you know you got the majority you got the late adopters and they each have their advantages you know early adopters get a little bit more respect for putting themselves out there but not until later and the late adopters, you know, get to maybe put on a more polished presentation and learn from the experience of the people oh. who have come before them. So we need them all to have that say that. Uh, Susan Klein put a comment in here. She hasn't been able to get a shot yet um, and has immune issues. Well, that's too bad. I would love to see if there's a way to get you a shot sooner. Um, was in the hospital with Gillian Barr sin Barre syndrome. Guillaume. 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 Guillaume, uh, also had some European COVID last October. Oh my gosh. Got sick in a weird way, being extremely careful and safe, very little work coming in. Anything extraordinary uh, she's been sending to her assistant. Glad that her assistant is there. Um, hope to get the J&J &J vaccine fairly soon. Then after giving myself a month for immunity to develop, I won't have to be so limited. That's great. Aim is awesome. to be fit and well uh when concerns here start again hopefully by late fall want to be there for the music musical community but at 75 feel like being semi-retired is quite reasonable yes i would agree every day tuning for non-musicians isn't all that exciting for you at this point especially with their assistant to help and that kind of customer out want to do what you can well tuning and prep for world-class people uh, we don't have frequent concerts and piano series here but the ones we get are fabulous with that level of use, heavy but infrequent. Uh, can keep uh, OSU's performance D in really good shape. Yeah, sounds awesome. like making good progress there. It is good yeah. to have a team and an assistant and um, go that route. Yeah. I would say this too, if there's anybody out there that hasn't connect, you know, if you are have built a business, and you haven't connected with someone that you're mentoring, or, you know, sort of passing your business along to or building that relationship. Um, you know, probably David or I is happy to, you know, discuss it with you. I know Steve Brady just, you know, brought on a technician to start taking on some of his business. I've been doing this thing in New York, where I'm helping other piano technicians get work. I know it can be intimidating, it can be confusing. Um, but the, and I know, I know, um, Tim, uh, Barnes from gazelle is trying to do his part to help people with that transition, but yeah, feel free to reach out if you have questions, um, or curiosities, because the heart of it all is you, that mentorship relationship, I think, which is really what we're trying to facilitate here, but can be done in person and you can feel valuable passing on your expertise as well as helping someone, you know, move a lot more quickly and confidently than they would have been able to do before. Yeah, having right. a having a protege, having someone coming up in your business is a life changer. Um, it really is a life changer. It's an infusion of energy, good energy into a 30, 40 year career. It's really good or 20 year career. It's really, really good. <clears throat> to pass it on 
feels great to pass it on. I'll cut in and say right here, if you're on Facebook or YouTube watching us, we're going to sign off there. So there should be a link in the chat if you want to join the Zoom call. But I'll, uh, I'll take us off those sites Please. in just a minute here. Come on back to the Zoom call, kids. <laughs> okay. Um, and 